When it comes to finding the perfect camera for creating content, whether that's YouTube videos or social media, podcasts, or even live streaming, the Canon M50 and the Sony ZV-E10 are incredible. That's why I'll be putting these cameras head to head to see the similarities and differences so that you know which one that you should buy for the content you'll be creating. Let's go. You gotta just press record. Now, I'll be sure to post links uh, down in the description below, and I would encourage you to check them out because you can either buy uh, a used version of these cameras and save a little bit, especially when it comes to B&H and Amazon. And so we'll post links to everything I mentioned down in the description below, but let's get into the similarities when it comes to both of these cameras. Both the Canon M50 slash the Canon M50 Mark II and the Sony ZV-E10 are crop censored cameras. So you're gonna get very similar images out of them when it comes to blurry background and low light capabilities. Both cameras have interchangeable lenses so you can upgrade the lenses as you own them over time or you can just buy the body of each camera and then get a lens that you truly need and want to get going with. And one of my favorites for either one of these cameras is the Sigma 16 millimeter lens, a nice medium wide lens, but for talking head YouTube videos produces a really cool crispy look. Both cameras are mirrorless which really makes them able to be very small compact cameras easy to carry around or put into a bag. I would say the Sony ZV-E10 because it doesn't have a viewfinder at the top it is a little bit smaller whereas the Canon M50 especially for photography having that viewfinder could be really nice. They both have a mic input so if you wanted to add a separate mic whether that be a shotgun mic or maybe a lavalier mic you can do so by plugging it into them. Now it is cool that the Sony ZV-E10 has a headphone jack, which means you can monitor your audio. So if you wanted to do some audio tests, it's a little bit easier to do that in real time. Nonetheless, being able to upgrade the audio quality coming from each camera with an external mic is a great option for creating videos. They both have micro HDMI out, so if you want to live stream or use an external monitor, you can. I would say, however, the M50 Mark I does not have a clean HDMI, so you'll see all the data from the camera, whereas the M50 Mark II has a clean HDMI out, so it's good for live streaming, but I would say when it comes to what's easier to live stream with, the Sony ZV-E10 is nice because you can actually live stream with just a USB cable and no special software, which makes it a very easy camera to use for live streaming. Both cameras have incredible autofocus, so you never have to worry about something being in or out of focus, especially yourself. And speaking of yourself, if you are filming yourself, both cameras have a flip out articulating screen so you can see yourself when you are filming or if you're shooting at various angles that will require you to change the angle of the screen, you can do so. And they're also both touch screens. So if you wanna just tap and focus on something, you could do so with both cameras. Both cameras have 24 megapixels when it comes to taking photos. And so you're gonna get very similar photography performance out of each of these cameras. As far as price goes, the Sony is $800 with the kit lens or $700 for just the body, matching the same price as the Canon M50 Mark II with the kit lens. However, it is important to note that you can go use, especially with the Canon M50 Mark I, which is about $50 cheaper at retail, but because it's older, you can also get it used as well and get a good deal that way. Oh yeah, and for the ladies, both cameras come in white as well. If you wanna get a white camera and look all cute and stuff, fellas, if you want a white camera, you can get one too, but both cameras do come in white. Now for the differences, let's talk image quality for video. Both cameras shoot 4K video. However, the Canon M50 isn't a true 4K camera because when you put it in 4K, you lose uh, your autofocus capabilities as well as it crops in a ton. And so it's very unrealistic to use the Canon M50 as a 4K camera. The Sony ZV-E10 shoots 4K up to 30 frames per second, and it is a true 4K. There's no crop, the autofocus is there, and it's an incredible 4K camera. You can rely on the 4K when it comes to the Sony ZV-E10. And so when it comes to video quality, the Sony ZV-E10 murders the Canon M50 simply because the 4K image quality is so dang crispy. Now, maybe you don't have the right computer or laptops to be able to handle uh, you know, editing in 4K. Maybe that's one reason why you would want the Canon. The video file sizes are a little bit smaller and easier to work with when it comes to the Canon M50. And so if you have an older computer or laptop, maybe you'll want the Canon M50 simply because it's easier to work with when it comes to editing video. When it comes to record limits, the Sony ZV-E10 does not have a record limit. The Canon M50 has a 30 minute record limit, which is pretty standard for most cameras nowadays. If you're gonna be doing anything that may exceed the 30 minute mark, maybe it'd be long talks, video podcasting, or maybe even just filming videos like this, but you just wanna hit record once, 
The Sony ZV-E10 is the winner when it comes in this arena because you don't have to worry about anything. And you can also buy a power adapter to get over the battery issue because you can use this power adapter to plug straight into a wall outlet and then never have to worry about your battery power and just get a nice size SD card and you can record for a really long time. Now let's talk about image stabilization because maybe you wanna do some vlogs or you wanna do lifestyle type of content where you walk around and stuff. Uh, the Canon M50 does perform a little bit better when it comes to that because there's a lot of jarring when it comes to the Sony ZV-E10. I can get very technical and explain why, but just know that the image stabilization out of the Canon M50 is better than the Sony ZV-E10. When it comes to which camera is better for beginners, maybe this is one of your first cameras you'll be purchasing. Uh, I wanna say both of them are fairly easy to use straight out of the box. However, I think for how simple Sony made the button layouts and things like that on the Sony ZV-E10, it is an easier camera to use. You have this wheel on the Canon M50 that shows all these different modes and maybe you're like, I don't even know which mode I need to use because there's like 10 of them. Whereas the Sony ZV-E10, there's literally three modes. It's gonna be photo, video, and slow motion. Whereas when it comes to the Canon and you wanna get into slow motion right away, there's a little bit of things you gotta learn. And then which mode do you use for photography? What the heck is scene? What the heck is A plus? Like, I mean, all these things, I'm like, I don't even know what the, all those mean. But the Sony ZV-10 just makes it so easy and streamlined. And then there's also what is called a defocus button on the Sony, which is a button that you can literally hit in any situation or circumstance, and it's gonna blur your background. I think a lot of people just want that. They're like, Omar, just give me the blurry background, which is a super nice feature, especially especially for beginners. Another cool thing that the Sony ZV-E10 has that the Canon M50 does not is a zoom rocker. So if you buy the kit lens, you'll be able to zoom in and out with the zoom rocker right next to the shutter button, which is a nice feature, kind of like camcordery, but gives you the ability to zoom in very smoothly. Whereas the Canon M50, obviously, you'll just have to zoom in and out using your hand on the lens. I know you're about to make an investment in one of these cameras. How much better would it be if you knew that buying one of these cameras is actually gonna help you make more money? But it takes some strategy and some planning, and we break down all that in our free one-hour YouTube class that can be found at thinkmasterclass.com. I'll be sure to post a link to it down in the description below. Be sure to check that out when you feel ready to do so. But when it comes to which camera is the best value and the camera that you should buy, hands down, the Sony ZV-E10 is just the better camera. Whether it's photography or YouTube videos or maybe even vertical social media videos and things like that, the Sony ZV-E10 is just such an easy camera to use and looks incredible. I think the Canon M50 is easy to use, but because of the Sony ZV-E10, it doesn't look as incredible. And when you really boil down the price point, the value you're getting out of the Sony ZV-E10, I believe is much more better, and you always gotta consider future-proofing yourself. And so if you're gonna make a camera investment, make one that you know will last you years and years on end. Because the Canon M50 really only shines in 1080, it's kind of outdating itself as time goes on. Uh, now, if you are on a budget, you could definitely get a cheap Canon M50 used uh, far much less than a ZV-E10. But if it's between these two cameras, whether it be the M50 Mark I or Mark II versus the Sony ZV-E10, the ZV-E10 takes the cake. Shout out to Sony for making an incredible camera for creating content, no matter what it is you'd like to do. But if you wanna check out another video from us here at Think Media, be sure to click or tap the screen. And I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.